action oriented. Which has three phases. Establishment of connection. Data transfer. between a network network uh, connection oriented network service and uh, connection oriented trans transfer transport service does it similar to like because network services also like two services right like core services which is really similar to transport layers two services
transport layer runs entirely on the user machine. If any packets are lost, the network layer of the, of the transport entity, the transport layer, has to make sure that these packets are resent. So it makes option for them if they are lost. By through retransmission. This is the interface that he provides to the application um, to the application layer. So the these are the primitives for a simple transport entity. So it's listening or waiting for processes to send data or to request network connections. That's the first one. Block, it means that it's waiting, it's sleeping until a network request, a connection request comes in. Connect, uh, there's a request for connection, so it's trying to establish a connection. When the connection is established, it can send data and receive data, and when it's finished, it has to disconnect. Why do we need to disconnect? So remember that circuit routing that we have seen that used connections we had to keep a table with all these connections each one having a connection identifier the routers so that is adding overhead and it's taking up internal space and so uh, into the router tables so when we don't need the connection anymore we need to release the connection free up the resources the memory and the table space. Now, that is a question which was on one of my exams. I don't remember which one anymore. But it says, the question said, does the frame encapsulate the packet or does the packet encapsulate the frame? And the answer is on this picture. So if the students were paying attention, to the, to the figures, it's really easy to answer this question. So what do you think? Does the frame encapsulate the packet or does the packet encapsulate the frame? The frame the packet. Yeah, look over here. Where is the packet coming from? It's coming from the letter layer down, right? First of all, the data came from the application layer. I went through the transport layer. The transport layer added something to it, which is this piece right here. And so when it added this piece, this is the transport header. This became a segment. And then you pass it down to the network layer. The network layer attached what? The IP header. Protocol, which is this. And when it attached that, the whole thing became a packet. And then it passed it down to the data link layer, which attached beginning and end of the frame, delimiters, uh, flags. And the whole thing became, became a frame. And now it's ready to be sent as zeros and ones on the physical layer. So the frame encapsulates the packet. In other words, the packet is inside the frame as a payload field to the frame. The whole thing, the packet with its header and everything is considered the data by the, by the data link layer.
dashed lines are uh, the solid lines are what the client is doing, the dashed lines are what the server is doing. So the server is on the left side and the client is on the right side. So first, there is no connection, the state is idle for both machines, then the client tries to connect to the server, so it's, it's invoking this connection request primitive that we see earlier, which is part of the transport interface. So it's pending to establish a connection, that's its state. <laughs> the server re received the connection request. When, uh, when it processes this connection request, then the connection is established. The client is notified and the connection is established. Then the data can be sent. When they are finished, we disconnect. Let's say the client has sent all its data and uh, it doesn't want to uh, talk to the server anymore. So it says, I want to disconnect. Does that mean that the connection is gone? Maybe on the one side. It's gone maybe on the one side. This is not like talking on the phone. I'm talking to you and I don't and, and you don't want to talk to me anymore, so you just hang up on me. Boom, the connection is gone. Does that work like that? With with the server and the client here? It can't send data, but it can receive the data because it can't stop that. It really should not be implemented in this way because, because what? The client may be finished, but the server might still be sending something to the client. Let's say the client is a browser and requested a, uh, a web page from a web server. And the, so the server is sending back the page to the client and that data is still on the network and the client hasn't received it yet. So we are not just going to drop the connection, we have to wait for both sides to finish whatever they're sending. Both of them should request a disconnect before we would uh, drop the connection. establishment we will um, there is something called a socket which is used to establish connections 